my name is Janet Toro. I live in Brick, New Jersey, and I have the incredible honor to serve as the New Jersey Board Chair of Clean Water Action. It's a position that began in 2014, but before that I served on the board for about five years. Now, I met Clean Water Action in the late 90s, and I think many of us are drawn to become involved in the community or active or to meet an environmental organization out of concern for our children. So at that time, uh, there was a big mega structure that was going to be built next to my children's grammar school. And as parents, we were concerned about trucks and diesel emissions and the children breathing that and safety. But then I learned about stormwater. And I learned about stormwater because an individual from Clean Water Action came to our door. A canvasser came to our door and spoke about stormwater. And I said, well, you know, there's this big development going on in our town. And I do know that the stormwater will be flowing into what's called Forge Pond. And I did know at the time that Forge Pond flowed into a river that served as our drinking water. Now, it was all because of the canvasser coming to the door that I learned about this. Well, I kind of dug some more. Now, remember late 90s and I didn't have a cell phone. I didn't have internet, but we had the local library and I went there and I used telephone book to look up environmental organizations in the area. And that's how I did find Clean Water Action because I remembered from the individual that came to the door. So I called up the office and explained the situation and Joe Neck Deckelnick, I'll never forget, Joe Deckelnick was the organizer at the time and he just jumped on it and helped us and gave us so much information, but also helped us to educate the local officials. Well, anyway, it has a very, very happy ending where that big megastructure, that big, you know, where the stormwater was going into Forge Pond did not happen. Okay, so that was my first encounter. And then the second one, again, the library. I used to love to go to the library with my children and, you know, they would have the, the reading circle and, and all kinds of fun programs. So went to a program. And as we're checking out our books, I saw a box that said, collecting baby teeth for a study. And the study was called the Tooth Fairy Project. I said, well, what is this? Well, I took the little slip of paper and it explained that uh, we lived near a nuclear plant and there was a researcher who was looking at levels of strontium 90 in baby teeth. Now what on earth is strontium 90? I went back to the library to learn about it and I found out that it was a radioactive material, very dangerous, that only occurs in the environment if there's a nuclear bomb, atomic testing, or a nuclear plant. I said, my God, they're looking to see if children have strontium-90 in their teeth. Well, it took off from there. And I came home and I told my husband, Joe, who's been such a wonderful supporter, couldn't do anything without him. And he said, well, you've got baby teeth upstairs, put them in the envelope and let's see what happens. And don't you know, uh, I read in the newspaper that yes, uh, children living in communities in like an 
18 to 20 mile radius of this plant had strontium 90 in their teeth. Oh, well, you know, as a mother, you just want to faint dead on the floor. And so again, I said, you know what? I'm going to call clean water action. And that's what I did. And uh, one thing led to another. And um, with their help, we formed a group called Grammys, Grandmothers, Mothers, and More for Energy Safety. And we just kept going and going and going and put together a wonderful uh, coalition of grassroots individuals like myself and environmental groups and clean water action. And it was during that time where we would bring this coalition together and we brought it together around the kitchen table. And this is such a fond memory because what we would do is we would share a meal. We would, we would lay the table beautifully and share a meal and we would talk and we would figure out what we were going to do. And I just loved Clean Water Action. Now it was Peg Sturmfels at that time who was the program organizer. And I just loved the camaraderie, but also I began to see that Clean Water Action did so much behind the scenes without getting credit a lot of times. And I thought, what an amazing group of people. And it was from that nuclear work that I was invited to then join the board, which was a terrific honor. And then to be, you know, board chair. So, you know, came through this because the organization is so dedicated and so dedicated to doing good for other people, not for themselves, but making sure everybody's okay making sure that everybody has access to clean air, everybody has access to clean water. It's not self-driven. It's driven by a concern for the entire community and for the environment. And that's why I love Clean Water Action. And I hope to be able to stay with them for years to come, hopefully. <laughs> cannot not mention the kindness that was shown to me by the staff. Who am I? I'm nobody. I was a, a homemaker in, in, in Brick, New Jersey. And the staff just, they, they put their arms around you and say, how can we help you? What can we do to help you? And I guess that's one of the things that um, after these years of fighting, you know, serious battles and, and, and fighting big corporations, being able to come out of all that and still being able to look at anyone and seeing good and not hating. Just, we have a goal. This is how we're going to get there. We're going to stay committed, but we're not going to hate anybody, even if they work for a really bad corporation that's doing bad things. Because if you talk and you talk and you're calm and you try to see a shred of good in someone, usually you win. And it's good for us as a person. It's good for our souls. It's good for our humanity. And now I'll get off my soapbox. Thank you very much. <laughs>